What is up guys, Matt here back again with another video for you. Today uh, is the second episode of Bands I've Seen Live, and today we're going to be talking about the times I saw Weird Al Yankovic and Aerosmith. Weird Al was the second concert I went to, and it was the Running With Scissors tour, also known as Touring With Scissors, and the big song from that album obviously was... Um, the one he did for uh, episode one, Star Wars, which was The Saga Begins, which is a parody of American Pie. And it was it was so cool. I, I had just seen Kiss and I was like, that was great. I'm ready to go to concerts now. And Weird Al was the second one. A couple interesting things happened at this concert. The first being that my dad lost his job right before we were going to go. Like that night, he learned that he had lost his job. And, uh, he still took me and it was like, I had no idea until like years later that that was actually when he found that out. So, uh, yeah. And I, I never had a clue and he just made sure I had a good time and, and that's what it was about. Uh, the other thing that happened was there was a two hour rain delay. This concert was at Starlight Theater. And if you're from the Kansas City area, you know that Starlight Theater is a wonderful, beautiful space to see bands and shows. And it, it's it's so great to see stuff there. However, you are subjected so much to the weather because obviously it's an outdoor theater. Um, but when they do shows, man, they they really rock. And uh, But unfortunately that night, it just kept raining and raining and raining. And I remember sitting in a poncho in the middle of Starlight Theater with my dad and it's just pouring. But there's nobody else in the theater. Everybody else had run for cover, but we're just sitting there <laughs> waiting for the show. And uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. But eventually he goes on. And I remember when he did the polka medley, he came out and he was like, I guess after waiting out here in the rain, you guys want a polka? And everybody went ballistic. It was so much fun. Uh, the the last kind of interesting thing that happened that night was I actually got to pat Al on the back. Uh, he came out and sang a song and uh, ran up and down the aisles and I patted him on the back. And it was a great thrill for me as a kid, knowing that I got that close to one of my heroes, uh, to Weird Al Yankovic. There is a picture that exists of it. I don't have it, but um, well, I, I have it, but I don't know where it is right now. And in the picture, in the frame, you could see Weird Al on the left side. And on the other side, you see like this red poncho, like squished between like four other people. And that was me somewhere in that red poncho. But uh, it was a trip because uh, I was at that time. I was obsessed with Weird Al, I, and and I, I still do love Weird Al. I think he's he's one of the most talented artists that's out there to do what he does. And uh, I was really big into the movie uh, UHF that he did. I, I was just like, it was so surreal to be there. And he did all of these songs, and um, it, was, it was incredible. The last song of the night, the last two songs, were The Saga Begins and Yoda. And during Yoda, the lights got taken out. And I don't know if that was a power thing or what, but um, that was definitely, for me at the time, was one of the craziest concert experiences I had ever been to. Aerosmith. The last time I was ever at Sandstone for a show, I have, I have yet to be back uh, to Sandstone Amphitheater, which I think is like now... Uh, it was Cricket Wireless, then it was Verizon, and now it's like... I medical sand, I have no idea what it is now, but, uh, it's always sandstone to me. Uh, Providence medical something, something, I don't know. Um, but that was, uh, it was about a year or so after, uh, kiss and it was for the just push play tour. And, uh, so the big songs for that one were, uh, fly away from here, jaded. And, uh, I think they did just push play. I feel like they did. Um, but they did a lot of classic stuff. Um, Fuel was the opener for that show. And that's all I remember about that. They weren't a particularly memorable uh, opener. They didn't really do anything crazy. The, the, the story behind this show is um, we had lawn seats. Uh, for Kiss, we had uh, actual seats. For, for this, we were on the lawn. And there was this big structure just a few yards away from me and my dad where we were kind of set up camp. And we look and it's like, 
it, it almost looks like like a technical thing, like where the, the sound board and the light board are going to be, and it's covered in black tarps. We just figured, oh, it's just a, just a thing. Well, it turns out that was actually a little stage, and halfway through the concert, the band goes out there, and they played all of the big stuff out there. They played, like, you name the song and they played it out there and my dad and I are just like oh crap we could have gotten we could have been right there man uh but uh, <laughs> it's like one of those great like uh, aren't we stupid moments uh cuz we didn't want to get our view blocked by this this thing not realizing it's a little stage and they came out there and they did a couple songs and it was i mean wow and we couldn't get to it i know what you're thinking is like well, why don't you just walk over there it was like it was too many people it was too crazy we just couldn't get there uh, they played a lot of stuff that I knew, but also a lot of stuff that I didn't. Uh, and it was weird because I thought as a kid that I knew their material really well, but it turned out that I, I really had a lot more I could get into. The one that kind of blew my dad away was he was like, uh, when he came home and we were talking about it with my mom, he was like, they played Toys in the Attic. I couldn't believe they could play uh, Toys in the Attic. And uh, it was a phenomenal show. And um, I remember closing my eyes at one point and just kind of absorbing everything, just listening to everything. Uh, one of the coolest audience participation moments I, I had as a kid was uh, shouting along with love in an elevator uh, <laughs> as the lights like flashed and stuff. And it was, it was so cool. And I, I as, again, as years go by, I'm so happy. I was able to say I saw Aerosmith and I saw Weird Al, you know, these things become more and more valuable as time goes on. And the stories behind them are, are great too. Uh, but those were two, uh, really great concerts, uh, that happened within a short, uh, time of each other. And I'd love to see those guys again. They do wonderful shows and it's been long enough now. I think it would be uh, a completely different experience. I can remember it a little bit better because these were both when I was in middle school. Uh, but showing up to school with a Weird Al t-shirt and an Aerosmith poster, uh, those were my two souvenirs from those shows. Uh, it, it was You felt like you were king of the world. It was really something special. But uh, yeah, it, it was really incredible. So those were the two bands I've seen live. Uh, sorry, this was episode two of Bands I've Seen Live. Uh, may, were you at any of these shows? Leave a comment below. And, and thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done an episode. I'm going to try to do more uh, closer looks at collection videos here soon. I've just been really busy with theater stuff and teaching. But uh, it's good to know you're hanging in there. And there will be more episodes coming. So thank you very much for hanging out with me. And I will see you guys next time.